it's wonderful to be here amongst friends and really it's a great privilege uh, you have such a wonderful group of people and a meeting and i am learning all the time so i'm a student all my life and as you have introduced i am i have been uh, a obstetrician gynecologist for about 40 years with all sorts of things i've done and um, i've been a rotarian for over 40 years as well and i feel so much at home that you are discussing vocational service uh, as a way of uh, serving through Rotary. And I think this is very important. It's not just about money. And unlike money, vocational expertise which you transmit never runs out. It's there and it actually gets better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do three things. Uh, but before I do anything else, I just like to make clear that I am speaking in front of you on behalf of a large number of people. Uh, certainly our group of alumni, the uh, Rotary Action Group, which uh, I'm happy to share platform with John, Rotary Fellowships and many others who together put their expertise, their time, their energy to create a problem, program, sorry, not a problem. Uh, and so that's, that's our background. And I think the second thing I want to do is to ask you for help in removing a, the greatest social injustice of the 21st century, I call it, uh, and that is avoidable maternal death. You see, mother is the most important person in our lives. She is our incubator, our, our life support machine for nine months, and no matter where in the world you were born, your mother risked her own life in bringing you to this world. Nobody, absolutely nobody on earth, risks their own life in giving another life. So I believe mother is the most important person. So as I said earlier on, I am here on a mission. I am seeking justice for our mothers who are still dying unnecessarily at childbirth. And I hope you will join us to save their lives and I'll explain to you how that can be done and you create opportunities to remove the greatest social injustice of the 21st century. I'm just going to share the screen now. So let's do that. Can you see the screen? Yes. Can you see the screen? Yes, you can. Yes, we Good. can. All right. Many thanks. Uh, I think this is the problem that we uh, face in this is a, a this is a real story it happened two years ago uh, in Jharkhand in india this woman was bleeding towards the end of her pregnancy and she bled for about two days before anybody took action then there was no no transport and then they just carried seven kilometers went to the hospital the only doctor available was off duty and she died and the baby died too. So what can we do to stop these things happening again? And I like to put the thesis that the danger is the delay in giving treatment. We don't, in the West, we don't realize when something goes wrong, you go to the hospital and you get your treatment. So it needs my fellow Rotarians a mind change, a behavioral change that when a woman at the end of pregnancy and the babies too have problems, they're like, like fire. You've got to douse the fire before you call the fire brigade. This is very important. So that's our thesis, the program. Now look at the, uh, the, the, the burden. 800 mothers are dying every day. Two fully loaded jumbo jets are colliding. And this is linked, by the way, of disability of six times as many and child deaths of eight times as many. And the sad thing is, most of these are preventable deaths. So that's why I said that this is the greatest social injustice of the 21st century. So let's look at what's happening worldwide. Now the world's population, government, everybody else worked 
to reduce maternal mortality. This was known as the Millennium Development Goals. It started in here on the right hand side, if, you, if I could direct you. From 1990 to 2015, these figures, by the way, 600 represents how many mothers die out of 100,000 live births. And it was about 600, and it should be, according to the Millennium Development Goal 3, a, a three quarters reduction. So one fifth, 150. But it's actually somewhere in there. So that's bad enough. We now are in SDG, Sustainable Development Goal era, where things are going to move further towards 2030. But I like now you to concentrate on this. And this is the world divided. The northern parts have, where they have reduced green areas, very good. But look at the sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, and of course, South America, parts of it, where they are suffering. And the suggestion that you and I will have as Rotarians, why can't the Rotarians and everybody else in the good parts, the green zones, join in solidarity with Rotarians in these other areas to save mothers and babies dying at childbirth. So our pro program Calm was born, and I'll just, exp you might ask, well, what is it? It stands for collaborative action in lowering of maternity and count of deaths after mothers dying and child dying. And as I have explained to you that there are three delays and if you visit our website, you will get lots of details. So if I may, with your permission, I want to move on. So it is a project as well as a program. It's both. And so what, what is the program? And that is to upskill the health professionals and build capacity and bridge gaps in care through training. So imagine there are 10 doctors. You are building an outer layer of perhaps another 20, 30 doctors and nurses who are not doctors, but who can give you help in emergency. And secondly, you're empowering your communities because they need to more help, they need to identify gaps. And so you need to bring the healthcare to the communities. And this is the, and this has to be tailor made to their needs. So what is good for Uganda may not be right for Mali and so on. So the, we, I, we did this in three steps. And this is this complicated slide. I'll just try and explain a little bit slowly. So the first thing we did is upskilling and capacity building. This is the training, the trainers, the top one. Remember, our first task is to reduce the third delay, which is when in a hospital, in an institution, you expect expert care, but then may not be available. So we go and teach a group of senior people, 30 somethings, using simulators, using videos, films, so that they get practical training. They then train others, and this cascade goes on. The second thing is we go to the villages. Uh, this program was, by the way, in India, and I'll explain to you. But they improve here. The women's group are sitting around, and there is a lady called Asha. She stands for Accredited Social Health Activist. They talk about how to eat in pregnancy, why do you attend clinic. So it's a cultural behavioral change, improvement, so that it improves the health-seeking behavior. And of course, we measure this as well. And the third thing, we have not quite established this in many places. There are some difficulties. If there is time, I'll answer questions. But what is needed when there is a problem, you need resuscitation at the point. Remember, the woman or the child is in fire. So you need to have, don't transfer them for the next two hours in an ambulance. Most of them will die. So you've got to do, this is like the golden hour concept. So nothing fancy, use an anti-shock garment, give an injection, keep the baby warm, etc. How did you do this? And this is the uh, training we used, World Health Organization approved, emergency skills, uh, and the GLOM and government are their, their own program. But please don't forget, not only training, but we need to promote family planning and we need to promote respectful care. And once again, that's our website. So what is the next thing we did? Well, we have to do impact assessment clearly to see what is, what is happening. And we did this 
the MPDSR stands for Maternity and Perinatal Death Surveillance and Response. It's a WHO program of varying degree of complexity. A lot of uh, governments are introducing this. But what it is, basically, you are doing the training, looking back to see how good, how bad it is, and adjust the program. Just to summarize my, our programs, we've done two completed global grants uh, in Sikkim and Bhuj, that's in northern India. We have uh, two ongoing, one in Meghalaya in India, and the other one is in Uganda. And this is what we have got. So, uh, lots of data, not all of these are validated, so I'm slightly hesitant to say too much, but basically we have evidence that 402 lives were touched. These are people who have been given the extra training, skills, the vocational training, and their knowledge scores are improved. We have got, we saved 705 lives. This is called model estimate, sample registration survey, not 100% accurate because the data collection is poor, but it, even if you can save one life, it's worth it. And of these 705, 123 were uh, mothers and 800 communities did. What is matters is here. This is a village women's group. This woman here is teaching, training, and it's called the life-changing experience. So my friends, these are not just numbers. They're real people whose lives have been transformed. And I think we should continue to do and learn. So the program doesn't stop there. You might say, well, that's the end of the global grant, which is true. But we have created resources as legacies and assets. And this is helped. And I heard earlier on how we have been helped by COVID pandemic, by COVID pandemic, paradoxically, because people are doing programs. We're collecting more data. So just to give you a, a flavor of this, the program assets and legacies are in two format. One is the manpower. These are not all master trainers, by the way, but they are our group, VTT, master trainers, and then basic trainees all together in Sikkim. We've done similar things in other place. We produced a toolkit. Some of these are obviously manuals, books, but many are digital. And we were trying to establish a communication network, mentoring network with telemedicine. Not quite successful, but uh, I would come back to you. But what is we have done is this. Uh, we've become a smart program because the impact is sustainable. The impact has been measured, at least as far as we can. The impact can be adaptable, and this is very important. I don't want you to think that one size fits all. The impact is resource. Look at all these manpower and other resources. Obviously, we need money. And it is targeted. It, it goes to the place where it's needed. So this is our summary that we have program assets and legacies. We can recycle, we can recreate a bespoke program based on the needs and priorities of these Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. And that brings me nicely to introduce our technical expert networking group, Tina, because obviously they are ignored. Now let's, we are not alone. We could not do all this alone, my friends. So we started in 2010 and we have produced a collaboration partnership model not only within but beyond rotary and that's at three levels and the good news is we are growing so what are these sorry my apologies for this complicated slide but please bear with me our partnership here first of all we have government this is india we have got our rotary calmed program, which is what, but we also have Rotary Action Group on, on reproductive maternal and child health. We also got Rotary and Doctors Fellowship here, and then other organizations. Don't, please don't worry about that. FIGO is the world body of OBGYN, etc. And then this is the amazing thing. Rotarians across the continents united. For the time being, I can mention UK, India, Switzerland, Uganda, Nepal, and of course, Japan and US. We so this is a good example of solidarity, a bit like polio eradication program. Now, you may be asking, who are all these people here? Well, the answer is, they are our technical experts. They are our alumni, BTT group, our international uh, 
program supporters and they are Rotary Maternal Child Health Action Group. They are the Doctors Fellowship and of course Cardinal. And this is what is going to create TINA. And that's what I'm summarized. So this across the continents, we have joined together for three things. We joined together for a strategic partnership, for tactical partnership, and I'll explain that in a little bit, and the operational partnership. Now, what it means that we need, it's, a, it's like a war, if you like. Now, war is not won on weapons. It's won on strategy. So what have we done to scaling up of this program? We need to rely on TINA, the experts. Now, in Rotary, we have got experts, of course, in RMCH Technical Ad uh, Advisory Group, which I'm proud to be director. John is our chairman. And we then have ex expert advertis expertise in DISCs. And lastly, we have expertise uh, in the cadre. So what we are asking people to do is this. We have a strategic alliance. This group decides where we're going to go, what are you going to do, and is it sub-Saharan Africa, which country, and of course possibly get some help. So that's that one. Please don't worry about the details. I can discuss later. I just want to finish now, uh, looking at the time. Tactical alliance is wh what thing we're going to use. So here, we decide the technicians, the academics, the WHO, the FIGO, universities, ex experts, professionals tell us what to do. And thirdly, op operational alliance. This happens at the country level where people join together. We have country champions and we join together with the country government, with the World Health Organization. These are called quality of care network, by the way, if Rotary joins and others like UNICEF. So it's rather than working in silos, if we all join together, and as our example shows, we get better results. So therefore, to finish, I'm asking you to consider joining a revolution to reduce and re remove the greatest social injustice of the 21st century. Please join TENA. And these are our commercials. Uh, Wednesday, th this <laughs> two days time, we have a webinar. We have a keynote speaker of Dr. Onshu Banerjee, he's WHO director, and we'll have three other speakers. So that's the Zoom code. We have a, another on April 22. Uh, you mentioned Gordon McInerney, he would have come, but unfortunately he cannot. We're trying to get a replacement. And finally, in Rotary International Convention in Houston, we have a booth, we have two booths for, for between the RMCH Action Group and the TINA. We have a breakout session. Please join us. This is a very large breakout session on Monday at room 320. And if you want to know more, please contact me. That's my email address and of course our website address. So I thank you again very much for listening to me and, and giving me the privilege of being here if you want to be part of this action, please join, please support Tina. And I think that on behalf of all those women and children whose lives your action will save, may I thank you most sincerely. Thank you very much.